Have you longed for squats in 40k? Are you all in with the new leagues of Votan? Well in this video I'll show you how to paint the Great Ethereum League Scheme so you can get them on the tabletop sharpish. Let's get painting. I've primed the model using Mechanica Standard Grey and then I've taken White Scar and sprayed this from above. This gives me a zenithal effect but the main reason is to make it easier to paint the white armour later on. The first step is to take some Lupercal Green and use this to paint all of the undersuit of the model as well as any areas that you want to be that dark tealy green effect that you can see on the box art. This will maybe need two coats to get a solid coverage. We'll use Sons of Horus Green as the first highlight and we don't need to worry about shading this, we're just going to leave that Lupercal Green in the deepest recesses. So take your time with this and work your way around those bodysuits, catching the raised areas but also filling in the majority of the material. Finally, we'll highlight all of the sharpest edges of the clothing on the underside with Cybright Green. Now, this is a very bright colour, so just take your time with this and make sure you've got a fine point on your brush and just catch all those sharp edges. We'll do all the black bits next and the colour we're going to use this is Black Templar. Now this is where that Zenithal Prime will help us. So in terms of what we're going to do with Black Templar, we're going to focus on all of the things like the knee pads on the Void Armour. We're going to look at the feet as well and any cabling as well as the gun casing. We'll do this all in Black Templar and it'll give us a really nice natural highlight at the same time. I'll move on to all of the leather elements next. This includes the padding on the Void Suit as well as the pouches, the holster and the belt. And the colour I'm going to use for this is Garagak Sewer which is a really nice mid-brown colour that gives you a nice leather effect. I'm moving on to the metallics next and the colour I'm used to base all the silver elements is lead belcher. In terms of what I've got here I've got the belt buckle, I've got some of the elements on the backpack and the working parts of the weapon as well. If you're not sure about which bits need to be silver just check the box art, it's fairly consistent across the range. Then I'll shade all of the silver parts using Nuln Oil, take your time with this and just work it across all of the silver area, it should put itself into the recesses really nicely. Finally take some Chrome from Vallejo Model Air or Stormhose Silver if that's what you've got and use this to highlight all of the silver areas. In order to do this make sure you've got a good point on your brush and just focus on pulling it along the sharp edges of the model to get a nice crisp highlight. There may be some gold elements on your model and if there are we will base all of those using Retributor Armour. Now this is a very simple step, it covers fantastically well, just take your time not to get it on any of the other areas you've already finished. We'll shade that gold using Right Glen Flesh Shade and this will give it a really nice warm effect as well as giving some depth to the recesses. And lastly on the gold take some Liberator Gold and use this to just catch all those sharp edges as well as map out any areas that you really want to stand out. Take your time with this and it is a thin paint so you may need to put two coats on. If you want to accentuate that highlight on all the black parts of the model we'll take some Thunderhawk Blue and use that to catch all the raised edges and those areas where they're going to catch the most light. Just take your time with this and add it sparingly. If you make any mistakes you can always go back over it using Black Templar and if you did want to go a little step further and sharpen it up even more more, you could use some Fenrisian Grey. With all that done we'll move on to the white armour so the first thing we're going to do is take some Korax white and paint this over all of the armour that you want to be just plain white. Take your time with this you may have to thin it down as it does go quite gunky in the pot but it should cover in one hit because we've got that Zenithal Prime in place. Shade that white using Soul Blight Grey just make sure that you don't leave it too heavy in some of the recesses and on the flat parts of the armour as you'll get some ugly tide marks. If you wanted something that looked a little cleaner you could perhaps go with Apothecary White but for me this is more suited to armour whereas Apothecary White works better on cloth. I'm going to highlight this white in two ways. The first way is to do some edge highlight and catch all the raised edges on the armour. The colour I'm using is Bold Titanium White from Pro Krill, but you can use whatever white you prefer. Once I've done that edge highlighting I'm then going to highlight all of the big armour pieces such as we've got running down the belly and over the chest because actually it's quite a large surface area and the line highlight will just make it look quite stark and grey and we want that bright white effect. We've got a few last things to do on the body before I show you how to paint the face. The first thing is that light that is in the centre of the chest piece and the colour we use that is Bad Moon Yellow Contrast Paint. Just paint it on and then wick your brush off and then just suck up any excess so it looks brighter in the middle and then you've got a nice diffused light effect. For that plasma effect on the weapon the colour we can use is Frost Heart and I'm just going to paint this straight from the pot over that white area and what you'll see is that gives you a really nice simple basic plasma effect that takes you literally seconds. To paint the face of the model I'm going to take some Kizilev Flesh. Now going down over a white undercoat this should cover fairly easily in one coat. Just make sure you don't put too much on so that it clogs the detail and I'm being careful not to touch any of the hair or beard. Next it's right down flesh shade and this will give you some really nice definition on the face. Just be careful that you don't let it pull too heavily in recesses like the eye sockets. 
Moving back to Kislev Flesh, use this to highlight all of the raised areas such as the nose, the brow, the chin and the eyelids. Just take your time with this and be very careful not to just paint this over the entirety of the face again. Lastly for the flesh, take some flayed one flesh and focus this just on those most raised areas. So we've got things like the nose, the eyebrows as well as the ears. So just take your time with this and add a little bit. If you feel you need more you can always do that later. The last thing to do is paint the hair and the beard and I wanted something dark brown so the colour I used was Wildwood Contrast Paint. Just pop this on and don't let it pool too much because you want to get those natural highlights. You can use whatever colour contrast you want to get whatever colour hair you want. And there we go, you have all the tools you need to paint your Leagues of Votan models in the scheme of the Great Ethurian League. A huge thank you to all my patrons who make this channel possible. You can support me for just a small amount using the link in the description. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, check out my other content and I'll see you next time.